What I first want us to investigate is that original graph that we we're just looking at, right? So we said, I'm just going to zoom back up. We said painters times time equals 48. And I put painters on the horizontal axis, so that's kind of like our x. And I put time on the vertical axis, so that's kind of like our y, right? So what I'd love you to write in your equation is x times y equals 48. Now, you may need to zoom out a little bit to actually see what's going on. But you should have a shape somewhat that looks like that, right? So you can recognize that same hyperbola that we just drew just by hand, right? There's the shape there, and you can see as painters increases, time decreases, okay? Um, you can even see some of the values that we thought about, they're actually on this graph. So for example, I don't know, do you guys know how to put coordinates onto Desmos? Have you done this before? Yep. So for example, if you go over here, bottom left hand corner, right? Open brackets, okay? We said six painters, that was the question, wasn't it? Six painters, that's the X value. If you put in a comma, it should give you how much time, how many hours did we say? What was our answer again? It was eight, wasn't it? Six painters, eight days okay and there you go you can see that point is on the graph in fact if you zoom to the right level you can actually see the coordinate axes right you could put another one on. what was the another one we tried um i think we said things like what was that if you had uh just you and a friend two comma how many days would it take you 24 thank you very much 24 now that's gone all the way up but if you pinch out you can see there he is right there okay so there's our solution but there is one important difference between the graph that we drew and this graph. What's extra? What's additional on here that we didn't have? The, um, negative side. Negative. Yeah, very good. So you can see, when we just pop this into Desmos, you've got like extra stuff over here, right? Now, why do you think I deliberately asked you not to draw this part of the, um, the plane when we were doing it by hand? Why did I ask you to not include that? There's a sensible reason why. Think about it, yeah. Okay, so number one, this guy over here is actually a mirror image. If you take your computer, which I cannot do to this projector, and you just kind of rotate it 45 degrees, like if you look at it like that, okay, you can see this is a reflection across. In fact, I'll even put the reflection line on so that you can see it. This is what it looks like. Y equals minus x. If I could type properly with my stubby fingers, that would help. There you go, there's the line of symmetry. So that's great. So it's like, look, this guy's gonna be exactly the same as that guy. Same shape, just the other side, okay? But there's a more important reason, right? We explored one painter, two painters, three painters, 2,000 painters. You know what you can't have? Negative painters, right? Unless there's like a guy like stripping paint off while you paint, what a jerk, okay. So this situation over here, doesn't make sense or isn't relevant for the particular example we looked at. But what we're going to now do is consider well, when it is. So from now on, and underneath where you drew that original graph, underneath where you drew that one, I'd love you to draw a new Cartesian plane. And this time, we are going to need the whole thing. You definitely need to draw this with a ruler. Okay. So let's have a look at 1A together. They're going to ask us for a bunch of things, right? So question one. The first thing they ask for in part A is, can someone tell me? What's the piece of information they're after? Say that again. Domain and range. Domain and range, thank you. So I'm just going to write D and R. That's nice and simple. For part B, I think they ask for, and do they ask for an intercept yet? Yeah, Y. Y intercept, if there is one. Y intercept. What are they asking for in part C? Sketch. Sketch, okay. So that's four things in total. Domain, range, Y intercept, and then we are going to get a drawing out. Okay. And then the very first thing that they give us is y equals, I think it's 2 on x, isn't it? 2 on x. Okay, now just before we launch into this, do you notice that this is really just dressed up in slightly different clothes? What we're looking at with painters and time, right? Do you notice I could rewrite this in this form? T, I could divide both sides through by P, by the number of painters. You get this. Do you see that? That's the y, that's the x, same deal here, right? So whenever you're seeing this thing with that x on the denominator, this is the shape you ought to expect, okay? Now, when it comes to domain and range, what does domain mean? What is the meaning of domain? Can anyone throw like a phrase or a sentence at me? Someone has never met domain before, and you have to say, well, domain is this. What would you say? Okay, so it has to do with x. It's not quite the intercepts though. We will come to intercepts in a second. What, how else can we describe it? the real x values that the linear equation Oh, okay, there's a lot of language in there, right? So, um, I'm going to fasten on a few ideas in there. It's x values, right? 
This thing here, this graph, it exists for a whole bunch of x values. I should point out, it doesn't exist for all of them, we're going to explain, explore that in a second, but it exists for a whole bunch and domain is asking the question, which ones, right? Where does it exist? So let's think about domain first. The easiest way to find domain is to think about actually the opposite of that, right? Where does it not exist? There's a single value of x that you're not allowed to put in this, otherwise it explodes in your face and your calculator will tell you this. Two divided by zero is not nice, right? Your calculator will tell you what? It'll say error. math errors. Say so forget it, don't ask me to do this rubbish, right? So x is not allowed to equal zero, but that's not actually the domain, right? Remember, we said before, domain is where the function does exist, not the places where it doesn't exist. So you've got a couple of ways to say this. Just to keep things simple, I'm gonna give you one. It's probably the simplest way. I'm gonna say x, it can be left of zero. That's okay, that's not equal to zero. Um, or it can be bigger than zero, yeah? So, so long as you're to the left, or to the right, as long as you're not exactly on there, this is where you are allowed to go. So that's the way we state domain. You following with me? Okay, that's domain, that's it, full stop. Let's think about range now, range. Now this is kind of the same thing. Range is not about where the x values can go, it's about where the y values can go. Okay, so this is about up and down, not left and right. Now you've already gone on your page, and I don't, so I'm gonna quickly draw it. You've already got on your page a complete Cartesian plane, and this was the shape that we got when you put in this into Desmos. Do you remember that? Okay. So I want you to notice this vertical asymptote, which we didn't draw before, it's a reflection of you're not allowed to go to zero, x equals zero, right? But there's also a spot that we're not allowed to go vertically. Do you see where it is? Where's that one spot you're not allowed to go in the middle? It's kind of in the center here, right? It was this very first horizontal asymptote that we drew. Now, just like this vertical asymptote has an equation, x equals zero, the horizontal one also has an equation. It's a horizontal line, so what form will its equation be in? Any takers? Hmm. Yeah, what do you reckon? Y equals, y equals zero is an excellent guess, even if you didn't know, think about this, right? The y-axis, it has an equation, x equals zero. Let me say that again, y-axis, x equals zero. So therefore it stands to reason if you switch everything around, the x-axis has an equation, y equals zero. Now we established, right, no matter how many painters you throw at this thing, you'll never actually get to zero. Did you notice that? So therefore over here in the range, I'm gonna say, well y is not allowed to be zero, but we already established, that's not telling you the answer, is it? That's telling you the opposite of the answer. So can someone suggest to me what's a way I could actually write it? Yeah, I'm going to follow exactly the same pattern that I had before, right? These are the parts where y is allowed to exist. You can put those y values in. See, look, these are all the ones underneath zero. They're okay. These are all the ones above zero. They're also okay. Domain and range, we're sorted. Okay, this is part A. Let's have a look at part B. What are they asking us for again? It's a... Uh, y-intercept that they want, if there is one. And that's actually very important because how would we find a y-intercept? Like I gave you this guy right at the beginning, right? I gave you this, oh, was it a three? I think it was. Yeah. Mm, is that right? Yeah, thereabouts, right? And then you told me, oh, I can factorize this, right? So, how would you find the y-intercept on this thing? I actually told you right at the beginning. If you can remember 17 minutes ago, what would you do? It's the negative 10 because all you have to do, number one, it's the constant part, but all you have to do to find the y-intercept set any time is to let x equal, does anyone remember? Zero. zero, very good. If x was zero, that's gonna become zero, that's gonna become zero, and that is exactly why we get left with the constant, okay? Now have a look over here. I'm just gonna try it. Let x equal zero. Does anyone see why we're gonna run into some trouble? Like I literally wrote it like four lines ago, right? Yeah, I can't divide by zero. This is the thing I established, right? If I let x equal zero, there's no solution. So there's no solution, that means there's no y-intercept. 
okay? Which, when you have a look at the graph, you're like, oh, of course there's no y-intercept. Look, it never actually touches. That's what intercept means, okay? Right, now the last thing is sketch. Now, I've actually already done most of the sketch, and if you drew your previous one, if you drew what you got out of Desmos, you also have done your sketch, but there's one little difference. You've still got Desmos there. Can you like alt tab to it? Go back to Desmos. Do you still have this graph on there? You haven't deleted it? Yep. On your next line, I actually want you to put in uh, this. Just make it a new equation so you'll see both of them at the same time. What do you get? You got it? This is what I'm getting, okay? Um, can I get a show of hands? Does that match with what you've got? Yeah? Okay, thank you, hands up. So, I'm a bit confused, right? Because I want you to look carefully, just look up for a second. This is, um, this is what happened with my painters, remember that? Just look at that shape really closely, okay? Now, I'm going to get rid of the painters, and I'm going to put the graph we're looking at right now, this guy here. Now, I know it looks different. They sure look different, don't they? But watch this. Doesn't that look exactly the same? I've just had to go in further, okay? So in fact, every hyperbola just looks like all the rest of them, just some are bigger and some are smaller. So if someone gave you these two graphs and said one of them is this and one is that, how on earth are we going to be able to tell? 